guys, Ron here, and I'm only human, flesh and blood, born to make mistakes. So naturally, I've messed up while playing Pokemon a couple of times, especially as a youngster. So I'm simply going to regale you with the various times I've made seriously regrettable decisions while playing a Pokemon game. Now, these are going to be personal, not general mistakes that every single person has been through. I've never used a Master Ball on a Rattata or ran away from a shiny Pokemon, but there are some interesting tales, so I'm going to actually go in chronological order, starting with the first main series Pokemon game I've ever played, in which my first mistake was not knowing that Pokemon moves were relearnable. This is actually a relatively unusual case because it involves other people. You see, back when I was 7, both my brother and I had Pokemon Ruby as our first game and we loved it. We even both had a trusty Breloom, but I noticed that my brother's Breloom had Mach Punch, pretty standard move it gets when it evolves, but mine did not for some reason. I guess I mashed B when it was first evolving so my Breloom evolved a level after it was supposed to and never learned the move. I slowly became jealous of my brother's superior Breloom, so when he didn't understand why he couldn't get past the rocks in Route 111, instead of telling him about Rock Smash, I told him that the game was broken and that he would have to reset the game. That was the real mistake. I lied to my brother because I was envious. I didn't know that I could relearn Mach Punch later in the game from the move reminder, and because of that I felt guilty about the situation for a long time, but obviously later down the line I told my brother about my true intentions and we laugh about it here and there. My next mistake would have changed my entire life if I didn't eventually find out where I was wrong. I didn't know where to get Surf in Pokemon Ruby. I looked everywhere and for months I was begging my friend Aiki to tell me where he got Surf, but he couldn't remember. I honestly gave up and just stopped playing the game for a couple of weeks, but one Friday morning at school, I told Aiki how I basically gave up trying to find Surf and it just so happened that some third grader overheard us and said, oh Surf, you get it from Wally's dad next to Norman's gym. If it wasn't for that kid, I truly believe I would have stopped playing Pokemon altogether, never bonded with other Pokemon fans and eventually never would have made this channel. When I came home that beautiful Friday afternoon, I got Surf and was finally able to access the other side of Route 118. As I landed on that shore, the music hit me with a sense of wonder. Steven greeted me and then I entered Route 119 and found a rainforest with tall grass, bridges, and waterfalls. It was paradise. To this day, Route 119 is one of my favorite routes because of this experience. It felt like an actual reward to my adventure. It seems like many other fans also couldn't find Surf, so in Pokemon Emerald, instead of having you go to Wally's dad to get Surf, he comes and gives it to you. Now we're going from the most consequential story to the least influential tale we have. For many years, I did not understand Milotic's design. If you look at Milotic's Sugimori art, or its appearance in the anime, it's plain to see that it was designed to be beautiful. I used to think otherwise because I completely misinterpreted Milotic's sprite in Generation 3. I used to think that this negative space was its tooth. I thought that the background was a long single tusk coming out of its face, and even worse, didn't understand how its eyes appeared. I thought that this space here was still part of its eyeball, so instead of the feminine seductive eyes that Milotic is supposed to showcase, I believed that its eyes were droopy and sad, presumably because it has a long tusk in the middle of its mouth. I later saw it in the anime and thought maybe it was a mistake in Milotic's design like Bayonet or all the Pokemon red sprites, but when I realized my mistake, my mind was blown. But when I came back to Pokemon Ruby, I encountered my next mistake, not knowing what set mode was. So when I came back to play Pokemon Ruby after a few years of playing other Pokemon games, I booted up my Game Boy and got into a battle, but for some reason the battle animations were off and I wasn't able to switch into other Pokemon before my foe sent out their Pokemon. What was going on was that years ago I got into the settings, messed around with them, like setting my game from switch to set mode, and I forgot about it. But I thought that the game was broken. At the time I knew about the cartridge batteries dying out, so I assumed this was another form of damage to the game. I haven't played Pokemon Ruby since that day. I only went back to Emerald, which wasn't a bad idea since it's basically Pokemon Ruby but better. But that doesn't mean I still knew how to play Pokemon at the time. When I was a child, I only gave my Pokemon stab moves. I would never give my Pokemon moves of different types. That means I had no coverage except for HMs. My Sceptile's moves, Leaf Blade, Giga Drain, Solar Beam, and Cut. My Waylord's moves, Surf, Dive, Waterfall, and Water Spout and so on. It wasn't until I was a teenager playing Pokemon Black that I realized how beneficial and fun it is for your Pokemon to have a wide range of moves, which is better than no moves at all. That reminds me of my next mistake, I I'm winking by the way, you, you can't see it though, but I regret evolving Pokemon with a stone evolution too early. So at least in the older games, it's very detrimental to evolve a Pokemon with an evolutionary stone too early because they rarely learn any moves once they evolve. 
Evolve a Growlithe too early, no Flamethrower. Evolve a Pikachu too early, no Thunderbolt or Thunder. It sucks because back then TMs weren't reusable, so I would evolve a Pokemon like Nidorino too early and have a Nidoking without Horn Drill. And I wouldn't even know that anything was wrong. I only found out about this phenomenon when I evolved a Pikachu and realized my Raichu wasn't learning Thunderbolt or Thunder. And I, at the very least, knew something wasn't right. Thankfully, Thunderbolt and Thunder were viable TMs, so no harm done. But the next mistake really hurts. I was one Pokemon away from completing the Hoenn decks. So in Emerald, if you complete the regional decks, you get a Johto starter. That's neat. So I thought I would do that. But let's just say Sword and Shield were the first games I ever completed the regional decks in. That's because in Emerald, I tried my best guys, I really did. But Lunatone was the only Pokemon I could not acquire. You can only find one in Sapphire, and my brother and best friends all had Ruby and or Emerald. So for many years, I just settled with the idea of not finishing the job. But in high school, I walked into the student lounge that I built and saw one of my upperclassmen friends battling with another person in Pokemon Sapphire using his link cable. I asked him that if I were able to bring my emerald to school one day, if he could trade me a Lunatone, and he said sure. So a week later I brought it in, we connected our Game Boys via link cable, and for some reason, even though it worked a week prior, the link cable could not connect. Till this day I regret not bringing my own wireless link cable, or trading with a guy I knew who had Sapphire way back before I even decided to complete the regional decks. Whatever, I'm over it. Not really, it still stings. I hate my life. The last thing in Generation 3 that I wish I didn't do was constantly going to Moss Deep City and talking to the space dude to see what number he'd say the rocket launch was cause my friend group thought that at one point he would let us join the launch and battle Deoxys in space. So while it wasted a minute of every day of my childhood, it did make the Delta episode a bit more special. A wish came true. Now, it was during the time before the release of Diamond and Pearl that I discovered the internet and began learning about Pokemon's history, but I apparently didn't understand a bit of what I was reading cause whenever the topic of Pokemon's creation came up in conversation, instead of telling people that the franchise started with Red and Green in Japan in 1996 and that the anime and card games were spin-offs of the main series franchise, I was under the impression that Pokemon started out as one of those Tamagotchi-like pet simulators. I thought Pikachu was the first Pokemon and the protagonist of these simulators and they became so popular that they created a video game with other pocket monsters, named after the fact that those digital pet simulators could be put in your pocket. I was obviously wrong and since then pinpointed where I got this notion from. As a kid, I think I was just reading the Pocket Pikachu Wikipedia page, which was a short series of Pokemon portable digital pets. Now a huge flaw of mine is that I get caught up in thinking that people will hate me if I'm wrong. Because of this, I rarely say anything that I'm not 100% sure of or believe in. So instances like this where I gave people false information 14 years ago still haunts me, even though nobody remembers or even cared about what I was saying at the moment. Once Diamond and Pearl came out, the games that were being hyped up for 2 years, I played them and for some reason didn't like them that much. That was my mistake. I grew out of Pokemon for 2 or 3 years because of very stupid opinions I had as a kid. It was my first new generation so any changes felt weird and less like home. Stupid things like the cries being more realistic, and even objectively good things like the backgrounds being 3D just turned me off. I didn't even finish the game as a child, I barely processed it when I was playing. It also felt colder and more somber than Hoenn, but that was the point. I was just missing out. I never even finished the game as a child, but that was exacerbated by my biggest mistake in Generation 4. I used my friend's action replay to get 99 of each TM. So my friend Brian had an action replay, that's basically all the setup you need. Oh, I actually forgot that some people younger than me wouldn't know what an action replay is. It's a cheat cartridge you put in your console to, you know, cheat. He was using it a bunch for a couple of months, becoming the king of Pokemon and acquiring every sort of item and Pokemon possible. And after many demonstrations, I gave in and let him do what I thought was the most innocuous cheat possible, just giving me 99 of each TM. My rationale was that I wasn't really cheating, I'm not hacking in a Pokemon or anything. Well, it kinda deleted all the HMs that I had, and you kinda need HMs to finish the game. Thankfully, I was at the 8th gym at the time and the Pokemon in my party had all the HMs that I needed, but that means I couldn't take out terrible moves like Defog and Cut. This along with my lack of immersion made me quit playing Diamond before even battling Cynthia. It's funny how in the next generation, TMs become unlimited anyways. Thankfully, I got over my Sinnoh dissatisfaction and now appreciate Sinnoh for all that it is, but it took Pokemon Black and White's release to finally make me realize I was being a whiny brat and that every generation having a different atmosphere was a good thing. Duh. But I do regret how in my first playthrough of Pokemon Black and White, I literally did not pay attention to the story. 
but now I fully understand how Black and White had the best plot out of any Pokemon game and some of the most interesting and dynamic characters in the franchise. But at the time, I didn't care and I think since most people didn't really expect a good story in a Pokemon game, that people didn't get invested in the story until it was too late. That's what happened to me. I only noticed how epic the story was once N's castle showed up and by then I already skipped all the dialogue and didn't know what the hell was going on, so my whole first Black and White experience was wasted. Especially since at the time, I didn't even know that Unova was based on the city I live in. It all went over my head. Years later, I went back and played it with more attentiveness and appreciation, and along with Black 2, Gen 5 is slowly becoming my favorite. Since then, I don't have any regrettable decisions. I've learned about the aspects of Pokemon that I get my enjoyment from, so whenever I play a game, I pay attention and fully experience the aspects I know that I will love, like the music, characters, etc. One minor mistake I made relatively recently was playing my first X playthrough with the EXP share on, which made everything too easy. I recently replayed the game and had more fun with it off. I learned from that experience and played Generation 7 with the EXP share off, and learned from Let's Go and had a huge team in order to compensate for the permanent EXP share in Pokemon Sword. Mistakes are part of life, but don't make the mistake of not liking this video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Check the description for all the music I used, the t-shirts I made you guys, my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early, or press the join button for even more rewards, like getting discounts on merch or icons near your name. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you guys very soon.